In the late 1400s, European adventurers set out at sea and began what is today called the Age of Discovery. Explorers like Christopher Columbus and Ferdinand Magellan changed history forever and charted courses around the world. The discovery of North and South America led to colonization. This is defined as the movement of people from one land to another in order to settle it or control it. Colonization of the Americas began a new chapter of world history, one where Europe would be at the forefront. Spanish, Portuguese, English, French, Italian, and more. Many European ethnicities all played a role in exploring the New World. Colonization and its surrounding events continue to have massive effects on geopolitics today. The United States, the most powerful country in the world, is a product of colonization. If you live in the Western Hemisphere, the odds are you wouldn't be here without colonizers. Today, views of colonization vary depending on who you ask. Some paint it as a simple evil and put huge emphasis on things like slavery and the wrongs done to native populations. This point of view has become especially common among young people. Polls in recent years show that 79% of Americans under the age of 30 say that white people are oppressors. The way we understand the history of colonization affects not only our view of the past, but our view of the present. Of course, this extremely narrow anti-colonial viewpoint leaves out massive context and critical facts. Colonization is an important issue that deserves to be treated with more seriousness than it is. As students of history, we must seek the historical truth through knowledge, understand the context of historical events, and recognize that people in the past were just like us who lived in different circumstances. In this video, I'll be explaining key facts about colonization that you weren't taught. This video will focus mainly on colonization of the New World. I'll begin with the background of colonization, explain how European colonization worked, address the controversies surrounding colonization, and then end by going over the positives of colonization. Be sure to watch to the end because you aren't going to want to miss those. Colonization of some form or another has gone on since the ancient world. When a society becomes healthy and thriving, it often looks to expand to new lands and shores. Expanding outward is one of the primary signs that a civilization is working. The ancient Greeks, for example, were famous colonizers. They spread themselves all across the Mediterranean. Greek culture and trade flourished across multiple continents for centuries. The Phoenicians, a people native to the Middle East, were another ancient group who were successful colonizers. Carthage, a city you may have heard of, was their most successful colony. It would go on to challenge Rome for control of the Mediterranean world. The point I'm making here is that colonization was by no means something that started in the 1500s by Europeans, even if Europeans would go on to be the most successful colonizers in history. The Age of Discovery started at the end of the 15th century. It was driven by many different factors. Contrary to what some think, Europe was already a prospering civilization long before colonization. The 1400s are known as the Late Middle Ages. Europe had recovered from the Black Plague and was excelling in commerce, religion, art, and urban development. Research indicates that by the 1400s, parts of Europe like Northern Italy were the most developed in the entire world. You can see on this map how in the year 1500, before any major colonies were established, Western Europe already had a serious portion of the world's wealth. Economic historians like Professor Stephen Broadberry have shown that Western Europe had already achieved a higher standard of living than places like Asia by the late 1300s. Islamic piracy that had devastated Mediterranean commerce for centuries had been driven back. European navies had gained naval supremacy and could protect their coasts better than ever before. The Reformation had also not yet occurred and most of the European continent had religious unity through the Catholic Church. Historian Alfred W. Crosby noted that in Columbus's day, Europe had the highest degree of mechanical and technological knowledge in the world. A classic sign of a healthy civilization is whether it's expanding outwards or collapsing inwards. Colonization at this time should be seen as a healthy, powerful Europe reaching out to new parts of the world. Compare this to, say, modern Europe, where the countries are in decline and their birth rates have collapsed. In fact, one could easily make the argument that modern Europe is being colonized by mass immigration. To put it simply, Europe in the late 1400s was a growing and vibrant place bustling with life. 
Missions of colonization to the New World would put this vigor on full display. Any suggestion that colonization was done by desperate, poor Europeans is absurd. Europe at the time of colonization already had wealth. But there would be one pivotal event that kicked off the Age of Exploration, the rise of the Ottoman Empire and the fall of Constantinople. By 1453, the Ottoman Empire had taken over huge parts of Eastern Europe. This was in spite of several Christian coalitions that tried to stop it. Due to the hostility between Christians and Muslims, the Ottomans used their newfound strength to cut off European trade routes to Asia. The Ottomans controlled the ancient Silk Road, which was the main route of trade between Europe and Asia. Europe losing access to this commerce had the potential to be economically devastating. Thus, European societies had to innovate to find new paths to Asia around the Ottomans. Exploring sea routes was the best option. Scientists of the time period already figured out that the world was round, so it was only a matter of finding the safest and quickest way to Asia. To do this, Prince Henry the Navigator of Portugal perfected the Caravel ship model. This was a new model of ship that was perfect for long-distance sea travel. It was small, maneuverable, and fast, good on both oceans and rivers. Its development and the work of Henry to sponsor exploration missions are credited with starting the Age of Discovery. As it turned out, the New World ended up being much larger than anyone had anticipated. The European kingdoms like Spain and Portugal realized its potential to strengthen their empires. Conquering the native tribes and subjugating them to the crown was seen as common sense, especially given the European technological superiority. This was the Age of Empires. Groups trying to conquer each other was just how it was. Let's remember that the two biggest states in the Americas before colonization were the Aztec and Incan empires. Emphasis on empires. Do people think they got their land through sunshine and friendship? The discovery of the New World also created an unprecedented situation for the Catholic Church. The discovery of vast new lands and peoples meant that there were untold millions who had never been reached with the true faith. Jesus himself had said, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. For this reason, the church has always had a missionary mandate. Many people went to the New World with genuine Catholic zeal to spread the faith to new shores. Now, it's important to define and describe exactly how European colonization worked. It took two main forms. The first form was to administer and economically benefit from areas populated by non-Europeans. Generally, these new areas were conquered and the people living there were brought under the rule of a European dynasty. The Spanish conquest of Mexico is one such example of this. I'll talk more about that later. This type of colonization was also sometimes done in self-defense. For example, North Africa was colonized by Europeans mainly as a response to the non-stop piracy that was coming out of the region. France and Spain conquering Algeria and Morocco finally ended the reign of terror of the infamous Barbary pirates. If you don't want to get colonized, don't do piracy. But this type of conquest was just one form of colonization. The second main form was the process of bringing settlers from the Old World to the New World, creating essentially European outposts. It needs to be understood that not all of the lands colonized in the New World were already inhabited. Huge amounts of land was simply empty. North and South America are massive continents, and it wasn't really until the late 1900s that they truly started to fill out with people. As a side note, this is why Israel is not comparable to European colonization. Israel does not seek to make a colony out of the Middle East or economically benefit from ruling over Palestinians. The Israel-Palestine conflict is essentially a race war between two ethnic groups who both claim they're indigenous to the same land. Zionist policies effectively seek to eliminate the Palestinians, which is nothing like what most European colonization was about. Let's look at one classic example of colonization of the New World, the Spanish conquest of the Aztec Empire. It was led by Hernán Cortés, the famous conquistador. Upon reaching Mexico, he told his men, Brothers and companions, let us follow the sign of the cross with the true faith, and in it we shall conquer. He then ordered the destruction of their ships so that failure was not an option. 
the Spanish had 500 soldiers, 16 horses, and most importantly, firearms that the natives had never seen before. With this, they conquered the Aztec Empire after a two-year war. Sometimes the Spanish are portrayed as barbaric, but let's look at what the natives were doing before they got there. The native Mexica practiced more human sacrifice than any other New World population. Every imperial city and large town had a central square with a temple pyramid where human sacrifices were performed. The victim was laid on a table, and a priest would cut out his or her beating heart and hold it for worshippers to see. Aztec imperial law mandated 1,000 human sacrifices every year in every temple, which totaled nearly 20,000 victims annually. They did this because they believed the world came into being through the sacrifice of the gods, and they could only be sustained by the sacrifice of human blood. I point this out not only to show the reality of history, but also to give a sense of gravity to what losing to the Aztecs meant. Of course, the Aztecs weren't alone in practices like this. Tribes like the Goitaka were cannibalistic. Sources note how they not only ate humans for ritualistic purposes, but they enjoyed the taste of human flesh and ate it for pleasure. European colonization brought an end to all of these practices. Now, the Spanish conquest of the Aztecs was significantly aided by technological superiority. Having guns and horses while your opponent does not is obviously a major advantage. However, the conquest was significantly aided by other native tribes who hated the Aztecs. Over 200,000 natives joined the Spanish in a coalition to bring down the Aztecs. This coalition would be what defeated the Aztec Empire once and for all. This is how colonizers like the Spanish operated, not simply smashing people with brute force, but also using diplomacy and wit. The Spanish would go on to build the biggest colonial empire in the Americas. Colonization is a topic that has several contentious issues surrounding it. These things shouldn't be ignored, but addressed directly. First, let's look at the issue of slavery. A common narrative that's circulated today is what I like to call the uniquely evil whites slavery narrative. It essentially states that Europeans are uniquely evil for slavery and thus should be punished in the modern world for their supposed crimes. In the following section, I will dismantle that narrative. Let's start with some basic, undisputed facts. Slavery is something that's been practiced through all of human history, in all lands, at all times, in one form or another. The ancient Greeks had slavery. The ancient Chinese had slavery. The Islamic world had slavery. Ancient Israel and the Jews had slavery. Africans engaged in slavery. The man you see on the screen was named Tipu Tip. He was a Zanzibar merchant who owned over 10,000 slaves. Odd how people like him aren't talked about more. In fact, slavery still exists in many parts of the world today. The point here is that slavery did not magically appear in the 1500s. European Christendom had actually abolished slavery of other Christians during the Middle Ages. The tendency to blame slavery on the so-called white man is an outrageous rewriting of history. Giving proper context to slavery shows that, outside of the racial aspect, its practice in the New World wasn't really special. Slavery in the New World was also not something that only European Christians participated in. Jews, Native Americans, and free blacks were enthusiastic participants. Even Jewish sources like the Israeli-run newspaper Haaretz note that Southern Jews own slaves in comparable numbers to their white, non-Jewish neighbors. But hold on, I'm not even close to done. The slave trade in the Americas would never have been possible without the slave trade that already existed in Africa. African kingdoms sold their slaves to colonial companies who then transported them to the New World. This is all worth pointing out not to moralize about slavery, but to show that it was a multi-layered issue. The point here is not to villainize anyone. It's to point out how the way that some people today talk endlessly about slavery and treat it as a white-only endeavor is deeply deceptive. They know the true reality, that all groups were involved, but they suppress this in order to advance their own political agenda. During colonization, slavery also wasn't universally practiced. There were, from the beginning, many different rulers and religious leaders who forbade it. Charles V, Holy Roman Emperor, forbade his subjects from enslaving or robbing native peoples in mission lands. 
In 1537, Pope Paul III issued a document known as Sublimus Deus, where he announced that abuse of Native Americans would carry the penalty of excommunication. We therefore are vigilant that these Indians, even if outside the bosom of the Church, are not deprived, nor are they to be deprived, of their freedom or the ownership of their goods, for they are men, and therefore capable of faith and salvation, and thus they are not to be destroyed by enslavement, but rather invited to life through preaching and example. This papal edict was followed by Charles V's New Laws in 1542, which freed all indigenous slaves in Spanish America. Of course, laws and edicts against enslaving natives were not always followed by colonists. In some cases, when attempts to ease slavery were made, there were even revolts by landowners to keep their slaves. Slavery has always been driven by the human condition, pursuit of money and power. The slave trade would vastly expand in the 1600s as cash crops became more lucrative, and Africans were seen as the best workers to harvest them in the tropical climate. People accepted African slavery as permissible since it was believed that it would help them adjust to advanced civilization. Early capitalism, globalization, and competition between empires made the slave trade take on new life. People felt that if they didn't make use of slavery, they'd be outcompeted by those who did. This created a vicious cycle. At the end of the day, the key point to take from all of this is this. The excesses of slavery were not unique to the New World, and cannot be laid at the feet of a group like the Catholic Church or the white race as a whole. In the West, we have the best records of our slave trade, but historians have also estimated the cost of the Arab, African, and Asian slave trades that were happening at the same time. These estimates easily reach into the tens of millions, even dwarfing the transatlantic slave trade. It's estimated that half the population of many African regions such as modern-day Cameroon, Congo, and Niger were slaves. This was without any European involvement. This was the reality of the world in those times. Despite this, let's not forget that the West would also be the first to abolish slavery. Finally, we should deal with the most damning accusation against colonization, Native American Genocide. The reality is that mass death did occur among the natives in the Americas. But, these were from diseases that Europeans had no control over. People's understanding of disease in the colonial era was extremely limited. Neither the colonizers nor the natives properly understood how to keep themselves and others from catching diseases. Germ theory didn't exist until the mid-1800s, hundreds of years after colonization took place. To lay the death of every native on colonizers is absurd. For comparison, the Mongol Empire brought the Black Death to Europe, and yet no one blames Asians collectively as responsible for the deaths caused by that plague. Nor should they. But while objections over slavery and genocide at least have some basis in reality, there's also anti-colonial propaganda that has zero truth to it whatsoever. In 2023, California removed a statue of the Catholic saint and Jesuit Junipero Serra. His supposed crimes include accusations of slavery, abuse of natives, and women. California made him the scapegoat of all the ills of colonization. But in reality, Saint Serra could rightfully be called the father of California. He gave up a comfortable life in Europe to come evangelize the Native Americans. He provided them many useful technologies that they still use today. Sarah gave California its first real code of laws, and was a key figure in building the missions that would grow into California's most important cities. The native peoples of the New World truthfully had no better ally than the church, and there are countless examples of clergy like St. Sarah standing up for their rights to the secular authorities. Condemnations like this are really just an anti-Catholic virtue signal. California, a product of colonization, will not be abolishing itself anytime soon. States like California want to erase their Catholic history, regardless of its positives, and replace it with secular liberalism. We could go on about many of these so-called colonial atrocities. In recent years, native groups in Canada claim to have detected so-called mass graves with ground-penetrating radar. The media ran with the claim and didn't question it. The implication was that Catholic residential schools performed mass executions of native children and dumped their bodies. These bogus claims were repeated for months and led to terrorist attacks against dozens of Canadian Catholic churches. Finally, after proper research on the sites was done, no human remains were even found, let alone mass graves. 
The truth was obvious from the beginning, but it got scientific confirmation. And even if bodies are ever found, the far more likely explanation is that they're simply part of old graveyards. Imagine being a priest in the 1800s, dutifully burying your native friends just to be accused of killing them and dumping their bodies in mass graves 200 years later. This is the level of injustice and hysteria ginned up by anti-colonial propagandists. While any bad thing that happened during colonization is usually amplified by media and academia, what we should actually look at is all the positives. One of the most obvious positives of colonization was the positive mark the colonial pioneers left on history. Exploration of the globe has had benefits for mankind that are hard to calculate. The creation of sea trade routes across the world led to a major increase in the global standard of living. The early explorers and colonizers showed that the world can be changed through intelligence, determination, and downright zeal. They braved the seas, tamed the forests, and left us many countries that we now have the luxury of living in. Another obvious positive of colonization was the spread of technologies that significantly improved the lives of millions of people. I'll quickly name some of these technologies. <clears throat> Steel, horses, cattle, plows, seafaring ships, firearms, and crossbows. In some parts of the Americas, the colonists introduced monogamy. They also brought sugarcane, wheat, iron tools and kitchenware, clocks, print, carts, and carriages. I could go on. They even brought viticulture, that is, grape growing. Every vineyard in the Americas should have a statue of a missionary like Junipero Serra, who contributed their lives to bringing these advances here. The spread of European civilization and Christianity to the Americas also brought new, effective forms of government to the continent. It ended extremely brutal and endless warfare that had been going on between tribes for centuries, if not millennia. We know that colonial administration was effective because revolts against it were very rare. Professor Anthony McFarlane of the University of Warwick wrote, Until the final half-century of Spanish rule, large-scale popular rebellion was all but unknown in Spanish America. For these contributions alone to what we today call quality of life, New World colonists deserve honor. But celebrating them as mere technological innovators misses their motives. It leaves us with a reductive vision of the human person. European kingdoms sought glory, honor, and spreading the way of life that they truly believed was best for everyone. They dreamed of making a mark on history in a positive way. Catholic missionaries are accused by some of treating the natives as subhuman, but the opposite is true. As the journalist Christopher Check wrote, Introducing civilization and its advantages was the means by which missionaries created the environment for their higher purpose, opening the gates of heaven to souls who had never heard the gospel and who had never been baptized. All in all, colonization had more positives than negatives. It brought valuable technology, new forms of government, and effective ways of life to the new world. New trade routes and infrastructure were developed that have only grown and become more active today. Colonization took Europe from a successful continent to a world-spanning continent. It wouldn't be until World War I when Europe lost this place of prominence in the world. Unfortunately, many governments in the world today disown their colonial past, but rather than condemning colonization, we should embrace its positive aspects. Courage, heroism, altruism, innovation. Colonization of the Americas demonstrated all of these traits. I hope this video has helped you see why. This has been Pax, and thank you so much for watching. Please leave a comment letting me know your thoughts on all this. If you'd like to see more videos, please consider supporting the channel by becoming a member. As always, I will see you in the next video.